G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for the final Just The Tips episode for the home and away season, which means as of next week, 10 of our teams will be out of the season and it's time to start thinking about drafts and trades and stuff like that. That includes my club, but uh, thankfully there's going to be heaps of action, particularly on this channel, talking about uh, the upcoming trade and draft period as well. I'm going to be doing a phantom draft on this uh, channel this week, not to mention um, I'm going to try and do a weekly trade update as well. But for the time being, we're here to talk about the finish to what has been a very good season, a really competitive top eight race. We've now just got nine teams realistically in contention. Essendon in 10th uh, need not only a miracle, but the most ridiculous of circumstances to make the eight from here. So really what we're looking for is to see if GWS and the Western Bulldogs switch places this week. And I have my own opinion on that which you will see in this video. As you may know by now, we do have a goal here at True Footy, and that is to get the amount of people who watch these videos regularly to have a subscribership rate of 50%. So about 46% of you guys who currently watch my videos have actually subscribed to the channel. So if you do me a favor, if you're enjoying the content and the support has been wonderful lately, if you don't mind just hitting subscribe and help me get closer to that 50% rate. It was a tricky round to tip round 23, and uh, most people, in fact, no one got a perfect nine. A lot of people were getting fives, particularly at the top end. So I consider myself to have done fairly well to get seven correct tips last week. I correctly tipped Brisbane to beat Collingwood. Glad I backed my gut there. It doesn't happen too often. The two that I got wrong were I tipped the Cats to beat the Saints. Got that wrong. And naturally, nobody would have tipped West Coast. Uh, I'd be surprised if anyone in the competition tipped West Coast, but let me know in the comments if you are someone who did that. So seven out of nine, I'm fairly happy with that. That puts me in the top 500 for the first time in a little while, uh, 496. So I don't know how many people are exactly in the competition, but it's well over a thousand. So I'm at least in the top half. I know that. The round 23 winner was Thomas Burke, who got eight correct tips out of nine. So like I said, no one got a perfect nine and his margin was two. So congratulations, Thomas. And the leader is still Oster Tuktan with 145. I think you won two tip ahead of the second place. So it will go down to the wire, the winner of the True Footy competition. The fantasy leader, on the other hand, is Bailey Sprollers. He's pretty much got that sewn up with an average of 22.52. So congratulations, Bailey, on that. And the weekly winner of the Game Day Squad competition, for which you can find the link in the description. It's the top link of this video. We've got about 152 in the league. And the winner this week was someone called Draper the expletive. I don't like the username. So I'm just going to call you Draper, but congratulations on a massive score of 2568, which actually put him third nationally this week. So congratulations, Draper. I'm pretty sure there's a cash prize associated with that. So well done. For anyone interested in joining the league, please do so. It would be helping out the channel. It's also a heap of fun. I completely stopped playing fantasy since I started playing this game. And of course, there's weekly prizes on offer every week. So you can join the competition anytime and the team you make now will roll on to next season. The earlier you start, the better. All right. Let's crack into round 24 as we look at the ladder. Like I said, only 8th and ninth can switch spots in terms of uh, making the finals. Of course, the top 7 could shuffle around a little bit. There's a couple of teams for which there is a genuine dead rubber. In particular, uh, Melbourne, they don't really need to win. There's no real uh, downside to them losing this week. Brisbane and Port still fighting out for second place. And there is still a chance that if Collingwood lose... They don't finish top of the ladder. Then down the bottom end of the ladder, the only real switch there is uh, West Coast and North Melbourne. Um, obviously, West Coast have won last week and off the bottom of the ladder. So the race for pick one, I wouldn't say is heating up, but it's, uh, it's an interesting twist in any case. And North uh, have a game against Gold Coast. So if they win that game, they don't have pick one. So a few little minor narratives at play here, uh, but let's get into round 24. Essendon versus Collingwood. It is a big rivalry game. Both of these teams out of form to different extents. Obviously, Essendon's coming off one of the worst losses in their history. I think it was their fifth biggest loss ever against GWS. 126 points, the final margin. They kicked just, what was it, five goals, six? I think it was their final score. Terrible performance. And it comes off, uh, you know, a fortnight of indifferent wins against West Coast and North Melbourne. Kind of just got the job done in both of them. Uh, and then, you know, their heads completely dropped against the Giants. So they're completely out of form, out of the finals race, really. Mathematically, there's still a chance, but they probably need to win by like, I don't even know how many points, like 500. Collingwood, on the other hand, uh, they, they've been slipping a little bit in recent times with a few losses. Defensively, they're a little bit out of sorts. They're sort of bottom four for a lot of defensive stats over the last six weeks. So they're horribly out of form. Uh, but that being said, is there a realistic chance that Essendon shocked them at the MCG? Maybe. Essendon is at least playing for a bit of pride. There will need to be a response. We've seen West Coast, for the most part, after a pathetic performance this week, there has been a trend of them playing well the next week. We could see that here with Essendon. However, I'm still going to back in Collingwood. You'd be a madman to tip against them. I'll say they win this game by a good 28 points, but I don't think we'll see the best form from Collingwood. I think they'll save that for finals. 
Uh, Collingwood by 28. Hawthorne versus Fremantle at the MCG. This will be an interesting battle because Hawthorne historically... I feel like, have a bit of uh, the wood over Fremantle. Although in Perth, I think Fremantle smashed them. However, that was a fair while ago, and uh, both of these teams have sort of trended in opposite directions since then, I think. The Hawks had a bit of an honourable loss against Melbourne, uh, but they, their general form has been pretty solid, obviously beating Collingwood a couple of weeks ago. They're dangerous. This is a danger game for Fremantle. I, I say danger game, but it's actually going to have no impact on the finals. Neither of these teams' draft picks will also be impacted at all, because Fremantle don't have a first rounder. It, it belongs to Melbourne and Hawthorne can't move or up, up or down the ladder. So it's just going to be who plays best. Fremantle have won at the MCG this year against the Demons. That being said, I like Hawthorne at the moment. Fremantle are the better side. It's a pretty 50-50 game, this one. I think I'm going to tip the Hawks, to be honest. It's a dead rubber. Hawthorne have been playing in dead rubbers all year, and I think that Hawthorne will just get the job done by 11 points. North Melbourne versus the Gold Coast Suns. Now, this is a barnstormer. North have lost 20 on the trot, okay? So there's pride to play for here. However, there's also pick one and Harley Reid to play for here. And while I don't think they would take Tank. You could definitely make the argument it's not in their best interest to win this game. I really don't think they'll tank, so we'll just put that aside for a moment, but it will be a very, very relevant storyline with regards to this match. North have been trudging along. You know, I made a comment in my power rankings video that their worst hasn't been as bad as West Coast, but their best we haven't seen for a while, and they've just kind of been putting in semi-respectable performances over a number of uh, weeks and months now. It was an honourable loss against Essendon. It was a relatively honourable loss against Richmond. Um, I think they're probably braced for another honourable loss here. The Gold Coast Suns have been all all over the place, to be honest. In the last five, the only team they've beat is the Brisbane Lions, who is arguably the best team in the competition right now. They're dangerous. They have the ability to wallop North Melbourne, I reckon. The interesting stat, though, is they have not won in Tasmania from seven stars. That being said, this is probably their best opportunity to do it in some time. I'm going to tip Gold Coast to win this by... 38 points. I think they are at least six or seven goals better than North Melbourne. The Lions and St Kilda is an interesting one. The Lions are, at this point in time, are not playing for top spot, but they are playing for a top two spot and a home final. St Kilda, historically, I feel like have played pretty well in Queensland. They've also really stabilised after a bad run of forms that the Saints have won four of their last five, most recently against Geelong. However, the Brisbane Lions are a different prospect altogether. They're coming off beating Collingwood in uh, you know a top two clash. I think there's just too much to play for here for me to tip an upset. And the Lions don't really get upset at home too much. It does happen, and the Saints were one of the last teams to do it, I reckon. Off the top of my head, I could be wrong. The Saints are also locked into finals now and potentially playing for a home final as well. So this game actually is significant for both teams. That being said, I'm going to tip the favorite here, Brisbane, uh, let's call it a close game, to be honest. I got a feeling St. Kilda's gonna play well but the Lions will win. They've clicked into gear. They're ready. 12 points. Next, we have the Cats and the Dogs uh, battling it out at GMHBA Stadium. This will be an interesting one. The, the Cats are pretty much out of finals contention. In fact, mathematically, they're out. People are saying end of an era. Who knows? It could be Isaac Smith's retiring. That being said, we've been saying that about Geelong for a long time now. So um, we'll put that aside for a moment. This is an unfamiliar position for the Cats to play in a bit of a dead rubber from their perspective. They don't usually miss finals. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out. They lost to the Saints last week. Haven't been in great form, but it is a send-off game and they'll probably want to win big at home. Bulldogs, obviously, have had a really indifferent run of form uh, with recent losses to Hawthorne and Tassie and then most shockingly against West Coast. And what I will say for the Bulldogs is that West Coast played their guts out. Now, the Bulldogs should have won that game and they didn't play well. But it's certainly different to saying that they played like a bottom two team. I think West Coast just played, you know, the best game they've played in two years. So the Dogs, to their credit, for as much as they've sort of botched this season now, they do tend to lift when it matters, and I have a funny feeling they're going to come out and win this game. So I'm going to tip an upset here. I'm going to tip the Dogs to beat the Cats at GMHBA by 12 points. West Coast versus Adelaide. Now, I reckon this could potentially be a good game. Not because they're equal in skill. They're certainly not. Adelaide is... Well, they were 122 points better than us in the middle of the year. We were particularly injury hit in that game, and this one has some emotion in it being Hearn and Shuey's final game. We saw what happened 12 months ago when these two sides battled in, uh, I think it was the second last game of the year in Josh Kennedy's final game. It might not have been the second last game of the year, but regardless, we saw that West Coast lifted 
in front of a home crowd and they're capable of doing it again and they'll have a lot of confidence and belief that they can match up with a side as good as Adelaide. The Crows obviously, you know, they were robbed against the Swans, it has to be said. People may have asked why I haven't done a video um, on the particular Adelaide Sydney game. There's two reasons. First of all, I was out when it happened and I didn't see it happen in real time and to be honest, I don't think there's anything more I can add from a media narrative point of view other than the fact that, they, yeah, they were probably robbed. But they are a final team on quality, I think. And West Coast, I reckon, will play well. I'll be surprised if they don't. Regardless, I'm kind of building this up like I think West Coast is going to win, but I think regardless... Adelaide will win, but I'll say that it's a really, really heartbreaking loss for West Coast where they play really well, but Adelaide, frankly, just too good, and they'll be angry after last week. So Adelaide by at least 14 points, and that's probably generous. It's probably going to be much more than that. Port Adelaide versus Richmond, uh, kicking off the final match day of the season. Uh, this is, a again, an interesting... Well, it's kind of a dead rubber now that I look at it because the... the Power certainly can't make up 12% on the Brisbane Lions. So this big game becomes a dead rubber. That being said, for the power, they've got a final series to tune up for and they're not going to take this too lightly, I wouldn't have thought, particularly after losing four games in a row. They've looked good the last couple of weeks, smashing GWS, notching up a win in Perth over Fremantle. And Richmond obviously had a win in an emotional send-off game for a couple of legends last week over North Melbourne. I don't really know what else to say about this game. I don't think Richmond will get particularly close to Port Adelaide. I think this could be as much as 50 points, to be honest. The power back in form. Tigers have nothing to play for. Uh, prove me wrong, Richmond, but I think Port Adelaide comfortably. Sydney versus Melbourne at the SCG. Oh, I wish I'd thought about this game before I had hit record because this one is hard to pick again. Another dead rubber. Sydney playing for a potential home final, if I'm reading that correctly. Melbourne, on the other hand, their ladder position cannot change from where they currently are. So they're locked into fourth. The Swans also have a bit of a habit of beating the Ds, or at least I have memories of them playing well and beating Melbourne at the MCG, but this is a different battle. They had a last gasp win over the Crows last week, got locked into finals last week thanks to the Bulldogs botching it. They're back in form. They've won uh, at least five in a row. It might be more than that. I think the Demons are the better side here, but I'm going to tip the home side here in a thrilling encounter, and I'll tip the Swans by four points. Carlton versus GW West. Now, this is the Giants' last chance to make finals. They have been, you know, for maybe the last couple of months, maybe more, that when that seven-game streak started, they have looked like a final side and, you know, certainly made a bit of a margin between uh, themselves and Essendon, who was, at the time, another finals contender at least. So this was a matchup between two of the better form sides in the second half of this season that I've been intrigued to watch. Carlton, on the other hand, what have they won? Nine in a row. They got almost beaten by the Gold Coast Suns. The Suns started the game really well, but Carlton found it in them to be resilient and overcome a bad start. And I think that is great finals preparation for them and shows their maturity as a side. We've seen that over the course of this year. As it currently stands on the ladder, Carlton have nothing to gain from winning this and GWS have everything to gain from winning this. That being said, Carlton's momentum is such that it is impossible to tip against them. I'll tip them in a 26 point win, knocking GWS out of finals, locking them into ninth and uh, Carlton going 10 in, in a row. And that is the final game of the season. What a great way to end the season. The finals eight race will uh, will be left until the final game. That's really exciting. As you can see on the ladder here, the top four stays the same. Carlton in fifth as well stays the same. The Swans win a home final if they beat the Melbourne. So that is there's plenty on the line there. The Saints in seventh, they'll play Sydney in week one of the finals. And the Bulldogs, controversially, this is my big call because it's probably more likely to be GWS, but this is my big call of the week. The Bulldogs to win win in Geelong make up for last week. Geelong sliding down to 12th. That is interesting. Then below Essendon feels weird. Fremantle back into the bottom four somehow. I'm not even sure how that happened. Oh, I tipped Gold Coast over North, of course. So Fremantle finished bottom four. Interesting. And of course, North Melbourne locking up pick one and subsequently most likely Harley Reid. So that sets up a very interesting finals week one, as you can see. Collingwood in the Ds, Carlton versus the Western Bulldogs, Sydney versus St Kilda, Brisbane Port. Honestly, if that happens, that is the best possible finals week one I could have asked for. But I'll hold off my predictions until next week. I'll do a finals predictions video where I try and predict the entire final series. That'll be fun. We'll do that next week before it all kicks off. As always, guys, let me know in the comments section what your tips are. What's your upset of the week? I think my upset of the week is the Bulldogs to beat Geelong. My game of the week will probably be Sydney and Melbourne, although that's probably the best contest. But in terms of what is actually going to influence the top eight, maybe the Bulldogs over Geelong uh, is both my upset of the week and game of the week. But as always, guys, I look forward to hearing from you in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.